Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining us for today's webinar, How to Effectively Manage Your Remote Team. Uh, for those who don't know, my name is Michelle Adams. I'm the Senior Content Specialist here at Kintone. Uh, just a little bit about us. We're a Bay Area startup that helps companies design custom business software they need. Without hiring developers, they're asking more from their IT team. Uh, our centralized platform lets uh, teams centralize their data, workflows, reporting, and conversations in one place. So anyone from manager to employee can see their data at any time from anywhere. All right, enough about us. On to the main event. Thank you all for making time to join us today. We're excited about the material we're going to present, and I hope it will help you uh, wherever you're at in your remote experience. Um, I'll jump in a little bit to the agenda. So we have four speakers today. Um, I'm here to give the overview and then handle the Q&A at the end. Uh, first off, uh, we'll be diving in with Larissa. Uh, I just want to touch base, though, briefly with you before and let you know that if you have any questions uh, for any of our, our speakers during the presentation, Feel free to add them to the questions panel. Uh, you don't have to hold them until the end. What I'll be doing is aggregating those questions and then asking them to our speakers at the end of the Q&A session. But you can submit them at any time. All right, and without further ado, I'll have Larissa Sudatan speak first. Thanks, Michelle. Hello and welcome. I'm Larissa Sugatan, Customer Success Leader here at Kintone. So I've been with Kintone just over three years now. I started out in the San Francisco office until last year when I moved to a fully remote position on the East Coast. So I'm currently located near Albany, New York, while the rest of my team is in San Francisco. And when I started, it was just me. And since then, we have grown our team to four, with two of the members joining the team while I was remote. And because of recent circumstances, we are all now fully remote. So today I want to talk to you about how to build trust within your team while working from home. So trust is going to be the foundation for how your team will interact by helping strengthen the bonds between all members. As a manager, trust lets your team know they can come to you with any issues that come up or any struggles that they're having. So let's review how to build trust through proper communication, staying organized, and building teamwork. Proper and effective communication are essential for building trust within your team. It ensures you are all on the same page and will set your team members up for success moving forward. So first, you'll want to make sure you are direct and that you set clear goals and guidelines. This will help them understand exactly what is expected from them and what they can expect from you. It can be hard enough to understand someone when you're face-to-face, -face, so it's going to be even more challenging through a computer. So make sure you say exactly what is needed and confirm they understand as well. Keeping meeting minutes will also come in handy here to make sure everyone is on track for those expectations. So next, be available. It's so easy to ask for help in the office because all you need to do is walk over to someone's desk to have a quick chat. It doesn't have to be any different when you're working remotely. By being available, your team will know you're here to support them. So our team uses Zoom chat throughout the day to communicate. And we not only do private one-on-one -on -one chats, but we also have a customer success channel so we can update the whole team. So in keeping with that proper communication, I have a touch base every week with each member of my team. This is a great time to discuss items they're working on and any challenges they are having. I'm sure we can all relate to having a stressful work situation that made it difficult to fulfill your duties. So this is a great time to work through those issues. Again, this is the perfect time to keep those meeting minutes so you and your team members know exactly what is expected next. Which brings me to my next topic, staying organized. So I have a meeting every week with each member, which means I may have multiple items to keep track of as far as help I need to provide or any challenges that need to be followed up on. So it's super important that I stay organized. I'm sure over our time in the workforce, we've all experienced frustrations that were brought up to management and never followed up on. I even found myself doing this at first because work gets busy and notes do get lost. So from my own experiences, I know that some challenges come up that make it really difficult to complete your job. No one likes to have that feeling, so it was really important to make sure I kept track of the challenges the team was having and be sure to follow up with action items to resolve. So I created an app in Kintone to track these challenges. 
It includes an urgency level to notice something is high and makes it so job duties can't be completed at all to low where it doesn't affect it much, but it is something that we need to resolve eventually. So I then added a workflow to allow me to review and lastly, approval from the member who submitted it to ensure they are happy with the outcome. So by staying organized and following up on those challenges, my team can trust that I'm here to listen and help make their work run as smoothly as possible. So next, it's important that there's a centralized location for information sharing. So items can easily get lost when they're scattered in emails written on paper or noted in the many different document sharing sites available. So we use Kintone Spaces and apps to share information and have discussions on different topics. So this ensures we all know where to find our latest meeting minutes or the latest announcement on our new process flow. And it also allows for accountability and ensures the team is working together and that we're all on the same page. And then lastly, you can increase trust among team members by building teamwork. At the end of each day, each team member posts to their Kintone wall on items they worked on, successes and challenges they faced, and sometimes a little personal blurb about what is going on in their life. So this recap isn't meant to be a super long note about every single item completed at every single minute of the day. It's a very simple note that should take no more than five minutes to complete, but it allows the team to interact and give feedback on what was experienced during the day. So maybe they'll uncover a similar struggle, or maybe they'll share a new recipe for you to try with your family. So this allows us to connect on a work and a personal level and have a discussion. With being a remote worker, it's harder to get that type of interaction, so it's important you sprinkle in ways to achieve that. And it also allows for a nice way to end your day. Once submitted, you can sign off. So next, it's important to manage load balance. We're all a team, so if one member is overloaded one week, maybe it can be distributed onto another member with a lighter week, or maybe you could take it over completely or extend the deadline. Unexpected items can come up frequently, so it's important you're flexible and you remind your team we are all here to help each other out. It's especially important when you're working from home that you set boundaries for work. It's easy to keep your phone by your side, but it's also important that you're taking those necessary breaks. Which leads me to the topic of working in different time zones. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm on the East Coast and the rest of my team is on the West Coast. So you might wonder if there are any difficulties with that in signing off at the end of the day. So it's important for your team to trust you, but it's also important that you trust your team. So we can't be available at every second of every day. So it's important to equip your team with those resources they need when you are unavailable. So I'm my day around 5.30 p.m., which leaves about two and a half hours where my team is on their own. I know that they have all they need to complete any items that come up. If there's an urgent question, there are other avenues to get it answered, or you can also appoint another decision maker during that time that you are not going to be available. So I trust that they can make judgment calls and know where else to find solutions when I'm not around. So trust is going to play a larger component as managers navigate this new normal. Proper communication helps us set expectations. Staying organized makes it so nothing falls through the cracks. And building teamwork creates a sense of a strong support network. By practicing these methods over time, I've been able to form a strong foundation for my team to build off of. As remote work plays a larger role in our lives today, managers will have to use new strategies and find new ways to accommodate the difference of not being able to be there in person. Thank you. And next up, we'll have Vincent speaking on how to clean up your communication. Thank you, Larissa. Hi, everyone. My name is Vincent Gang. I'm the HR coordinator at Kintone Corporation. Today, I want to talk to you all about cleaning up your communication uh, and sharing some of my perspectives from an HR standpoint. So a little bit about me. I currently handle all HR-related functions within Kintone Corporation. So this includes recruitment, payroll, benefits, et cetera. Before joining Kintone, I worked in HR-related roles in Japan for about nine years. In my current role, I'm part of a global HR team that consists of over 40 HR members in the organization. My main team consists of six members, with five of them based in Japan. So that means I'm the only full-time HR personnel in the U.S. office. Besides Japan, I also occasionally communicate with members in other parts of the world, including the U.S. East Coast, 
Shanghai, and Vietnam. Due to the time difference, this means I have to work with four time zones regularly and six on occasion. My main communications are with the team in Japan, which due to the time difference means that when my workday is ending here, Japan's workday is just starting over there. Today, I want to share with you what I've learned through working remotely and some of my perspectives on how to clean up your communication to make things more efficient. Based on my experiences, there are three main things I want to share today. Uh, I have noticed that organizing your communication, setting communication standards, and being transparent with your team are key factors to successfully manage your work remotely. Now, I want to further elaborate on this. When I say organizing your communication, I mean this more as organizing your tasks for the day so that you can communicate what is most important to your team members so that they can progress further with their own tasks. When we're working in an office in proximity of each other, we, we have the convenience of discussing what needs to be done for the day and to ask for help when we need it. Of course, when we're working remotely through different time zones, we don't have that convenience. So I like to approach my tasks for each day as if I'm playing catch ball. And the goal is to throw as many catch balls that are in my court to my team's court uh, in Japan. So this means prioritizing the tasks I need to complete in order to let my coworkers complete their own tasks. So this means this may be completing a report, or inputting data, and making sure to communicate uh, the tasks that I have done for the day to my team. So that's like throwing the ball in their court. And so I'm setting up my coworkers to pass the catch ball back to me. So in order to achieve this, you need to have the proper processes and tools in place so that you know what's being done and how to pass, how to pass the catch ball back and forth efficiently. So for me, this is more of a, a way of thinking when I tackle the tasks I have for the day. Now, I want to get into something a little bit more concrete, and it's about creating a standard for communication. When you're working with a remote team, your communications come from different tools and apps and can often become scattered. This is why it's important to make it clear to your team how you should share information. This means creating specific rules or policies and sticking to them. In my case, uh, my team has a recurring task of handling employee payroll every month. And of course, this is a very important task. And initially, we didn't have a standard way of communicating when taking on this task. And our communications were scattered through emails like this. And I think a lot of people can sort of relate. Um, when we're sending emails, we, we, we were sending emails to our payroll specialists, and we, can, we had different requests at different dates, and sometimes different email titles, and even though it was all about the same payroll. So this got confusing for Emily, our payroll specialist. And she had to track down all the different requests when inputting the payroll. So we decided to create a rule about how we communicate about payroll. The rule was uh, whenever we communicated with a payroll specialist, we would summarize and include all the previous requests we had in each new email. So an example would be this. So when we were sending a new email, we would always summarize all the previous requests we had in each new email. So that way, Emily, she doesn't have to look back at all the different emails. All members were able to be on the same page through just one email. So the point is to create a standard of communication that works for your team. It can be a rule or policy on how to share information. And the important thing is making sure all members stick to it. So I have found that this has saved us a lot of time and avoided a lot of mistakes especially when it comes to something so important like payroll. The last thing I want to talk about is transparency, and that is allowing transparency whenever possible. We live in a world where we can obtain 
vast amounts of information to the palm of our hand. And so there's, there's no point in hiding things that don't need to be hidden. People will eventually find things out on their own. Of course, within HR, there's a level of confidentiality with certain information. So I'm not saying to make everyone's salary information transparent. So no, that's a big no-no. But besides what needs to be confidential, everything else can be open. Or at least give your team the option to make something public or private. An example of how we do this for the HR team at Kintone is the use of open threads on our Kintone platform to make announcements or to ask questions. So, for example, the, in the past, we made an, exam, an announcement about health insurance survey to our employees, um, and that's the example on the top right. And those that had questions had asked them within that same thread. So all the comments are open to everyone, and people can see what's been asked what's been answered, and what's being discussed. This allows anyone to see if a question that they want to ask has already been answered. Employees can also start their own thread and ask questions that are shown publicly. Anyone can chime in and answer or ask follow-up questions. So allowing this transparency makes it easy to not only answer questions, but also avoid multiple people asking me individually about the same thing. And people also end up doing my job for me, which is that they look at the threads and they chime in and they answer questions for me. And I feel that that's one of the biggest advantages to allowing transparency. Uh, at Kintone, of course, we use the Kintone platform to make this possible, but I'm, I'm sure there are many different ways to allow this kind of transparency in your organization. So those are my perspectives on cleaning up your communication. So first, um, organizing your communication, that's that catch ball philosophy I have, um, and then creating a standard for communication and sticking to it, and lastly, allowing transparency whenever possible. So thank you for listening. Uh, I will now pass uh, the baton to my colleague, Brittany. Awesome. Thank you so much, Vincent. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Brittany Paulo, and I'm going to be talking to you about creating structure that delivers. So a little bit about my history with the organization. So I worked out of Kintone headquarters in San Francisco for about a year and a half. I then had to relocate to Southern California to be close to family. In July, I will have been managing remotely for about two years, and I currently sit on a marketing team with seven members, all primarily out of the San Francisco office. So one of my biggest takeaways, not only as a remote employee, but definitely as a remote manager, is the importance of creating structure. Not only structure in your day-to-day -day work, as I'm sure many of you have been learning about, but also structure around your communication with your team, your processes, and definitely your tools. When you're one of the few people on your team who doesn't work from the office, you quickly learn that you simply don't know what you don't know. When I first moved into a remote role, I had to ask team members to be cognizant, cognizant to share updates in our team weekly or on our team portal, because you will miss those sidebar conversations that happen pre and post meeting, and you aren't able to run over to someone to get a quick answer face to face. To mitigate some of these issues, it's extremely important to create structure around your communication policies. And I've come up with four suggestions on how to do that. So first, one-on-ones with fellow stakeholders. I recommend setting up meetings with coworkers, not only on your team, but the teams that you collaborate with most. You can, of course, suggest the cadence is needed, and a set agenda isn't always necessary, but it's essential to have those conversations reserved to uncover roadblocks, share project updates, and brainstorm. Second, we want to create a framework for knowledge sharing. This is definitely going to look different for each team, but for us, we create this structure through kickoff calls for new events and campaigns, to review the why and the how, such as assigning tasks, goals, due dates, and KPIs. We also host KPTs, which stand for Keeps, Problems, Tries, for large campaigns and for all of our events to see what worked well and what didn't, as well as suggest tries for next time. A weekly departmental campaign update. So my team uh, recently pivoted, um, so we're diving deep into projects during our weekly update. This allows every member 
to provide their unique perspectives, and we get to learn from one another as well. Finally, designating what each communication channel is for. Vincent touched on this a little bit as well, but it's essential to create a communication policy for each of your platforms to avoid data silos and miscommunication. For us, we use Slack for instant communication. It's great for quick answers to questions, but not great for diving deep into any specific conversation. We use Zoom for video conferencing to brainstorm and for Team Connect. I suggest turning on your cameras because it's likely the closest thing to face-to-face -to -face interaction you'll get while being remote. We use Kintone as our internal team portal for sharing important data because we all have access to it. And we mostly try to avoid emails for internal communication uh, since we refer to our unique data points. Every organization's technology stack is different, but I recommend identifying what technology should be used when and having a shared agreement across the team. So now I want to touch on workflows. So the first suggestion is creating processes and workflows to track campaign progress. For us, we have a workflow for each aspect of our event, from content creation, speaking engagement, booth coverage, you name it, and we have a process to make us as efficient as possible. I recommend looking at your workflows, identifying where you can improve the process, and finding a technology that can support you to do that. The benefit for me as a manager and my team is we set up automatic reminders so you're not micromanaging that process. We also always review outdated tasks in our weekly as well to keep us all accountable. Secondly, creating a framework for submitting new ideas. So where can members both on your team and off your team share suggestions and ideas? For us, that looks like a marketing idea box app where folks can share screenshots of ads or campaigns they thought were successful. And our team reviews, assesses the perceived benefit for its time to create, and then approves or denies these requests with explanations as to why. Uh, lastly, we have our framework for constructive criticism. So I touched on our KPT sessions a bit ago, but we also have an app where we can track what worked well and what didn't, as well as suggested tries for next time. This structure allows my team to be truly transparent and remove defensiveness because it's just a part of the process. So I'm gonna go back to this page, okay. Cool, so next I wanna move on to some of the tools that we use to help us um, stay as organized as possible. So the first is our events and ads management app, which gives us access to our calendar, our approval workflow, we can assign tasks, do budget tracking, as well as post campaign review. So the first thing you're gonna see is our, just a screenshot of our events and ads management app with a view of all of our upcoming events. Red events are happening that week, green within the next two weeks. We also assign who internally is attached to each event. This is a great high level view of our upcoming event calendar. Next, you'll see uh, an event form on the left. We require this to be filled out at least two months before the engagement and it allow us, allows us to understand the scope of the engagement. Is a PowerPoint required? Are we responsible for driving traffic? Do we need swag? And then we assign task and um, time accordingly. We created this process because we were having discrepancies between what folks thought an event would require versus our deliverables. So this really helped us clear up that disconnect. On the right hand side, you'll see views within the app so we can see past and upcoming events. My favorite view here is a budget tracker so we can see how much we spent annually and break it down by event category as well. Here you'll see a specific record within the events and ads management app. On the top, we have our swag app where we check inventory and request new swag. We can tag this event into a larger campaign, assign specific tasks related to the event, as well as notes related to that event, as well as our KPT, which I touched on. We can also attach documents such as the contract, our on-site schedule, and the KPIs. And lastly, we can assign members to various aspects of the event from content to speaking to logistics. Now I want to share some examples of our email and content request app. So here we have our calendars. We can review assignments and reminders. The first view you're seeing is a high-level view of all the content, including email and blog for the month. We review this during our content planning calls to ensure we aren't cannibalizing our content efforts and we are extremely organized. 
Here you'll see a record, um, which something I really love here is our process management workflow. Collaborating on content can be stressful and inefficient sometimes, especially if you are working remote. Here we can set up automatic reminders to pass it to the next person for review and pass it back for revision. No matter what software you use, I think it's really important to identify the process for approving, reviewing, and sending back any piece of content. So that's it for me, guys. I'm going to hand it over to Tim to talk about maintaining a work-life balance. Thank you. Thank you, Brittany. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Tim Eddingfield. I'm the nonprofit community leader for Kintone. And uh, one of the things you'll find out about me is that I have a lot of things on my plate. Um, not only do I work with nonprofits worldwide, but I also conduct internal training and customer community facilitation. So there's a lot of um, plates that I'm spinning as well as uh, balls in the air that I'm juggling. So how do you keep sane by doing all of this? Um, one of the things that I have found is by avoiding burnout. Um, something to know about where we're at in this time is that it used to be working from home was a luxury. Um, something that large companies would say to us to, to get us enticed to join them. Now it's a survival requirement. It's, it's expected. So like a new relationship uh, without boundaries, you need to, to organize yourself and know yourself about uh, what you can handle and what you can't handle. Um, the other piece, too, is understand that remote work doesn't have to be isolating. It can be uh, an empowering experience, but at the same time, it can, it can keep you uh, connected with your team, especially if you have the right tools to, pro to, to provide that connection. Um, we use Zoom internally to be able to communicate um, via meetings or via um, the Zoom chat. But at the same time also, we take time to see each other weekly on a, on a virtual uh, sort of happy hour. Um, this is a time to sort of just relax and, and talk to each other as people. And that's a way to avoid burnout as a working from home person. Uh, being able to feel part of a commu community or being able to be, feel part of uh, a team. Uh, the other part to that is keeping yourself organized. Like I said before, there's only a certain amount of time in a day. So being clear about your particular skill sets or your particular um, priorities. Um, one of the tools that I use is particularly a calendar tool that allows my clients and uh, the people that I work with every day to be able to see exactly what's available to book. Um, this empowers them to not have to go back and forth with me through emails to say, hey, is Monday available? No, Monday's not available. It was, but it wasn't anymore. Um, this is a live connection to my calendar so that way they can book with surety that they're going to get into an open slot. Um, there are many tools out there that connect to your calendar to do this, one of which is um, Calendly, which I, I know that some people use. The one that you see here on the screen is um, an integration with HubSpot. Um, but the, the idea, again, is protecting your time as well. If you know you have a large project or you have a lot of solo work that you need to do, if you block that time on your calendar and you protect yourself, then you'll be able to, to save the, the sanity to get it all done. Um, you've probably been listening in and you've been hearing the consistent statement of clear communication with your team. Um, as a team, if you're clear with your communication and you are clear about what the expectations are, that will also save you from that burnout uh, that occurs. Because one, you're being heard. Two, you can have a very clear expectation of what the communication is to be. For example, if I were to, to respond to one of my teammates and say, I need uh, help with a marketing activity. 
then I know in our agreement that I have two days to wait until I get a response and then I can feel worried if I don't hear anything in two days. Um, that's an agreement that we set as a team for expectations. Um, by doing so with your team, you can save yourself from that uncertainty. The same thing applies with um, when you're talking about staying connected, have uh, book times to be fun together as a team. Um, when you're able to go and visit each other in person, take time to go do a fun activity. This picture right here is, is of us uh, going and doing karaoke at one of our uh, locations. It's a lot of fun. And you get to experience your team in a light that you wouldn't normally experience them in the work day. So again, we're going to recap. Balance your work hours, know your own habits, and know the people in your home. Um, make sure that you are, you're clear about what you can offer. Um, if you find that you're going through and you work like, let's say, a day that's 12 hours, try and balance that by taking half a day off the next day or the day after. Maybe even take a day off completely in the next week to balance it out. You shouldn't have to work every single day all day long. Um, that will drain your energy and also it will drain your motivation uh, to do well in your job. Um, know your habits. I know for myself when I'm working on a, on a solo project, um, if, I, if I can crank the music in my, in my office, in my home office, and, and work at 3 o'clock in the morning, um, I'll get a lot done rather than trying to knock it out at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, but that's just me. Others will have different uh, needs and perspectives. And as always, when you're working from home, keep in mind the people that live with you. If you have kids, include them in your schedule. Schedule 15 or 30 minute breaks to interact with those kids, to, uh, to, to again, create the connection that they are, they're still important to you, as I'm certain they are. Um, if you don't have kids but you have roommates or housemates, have established communication with them and established expectations for what, uh, what they should understand and what they should expect from you while you're working. Um, a lot of times we go through and we just assume if um, they see us on our computer, then they know we're working. That's not always the case. Just making sure that, that communication is clear will make, again, living life a lot easier. And always remember to unplug when you're done with work. Um, this is one of my challenges, is learning to turn the phone off, turn the computer off, and just let whatever comes in be something that can be dealt in the next day or in the next week if you're starting the weekend. Creating a work-life balance can be fun. So if you have the chance, make it fun. Do what's necessary to, to stay sane. But also if you're finding that you're drowning, if you're finding that you are, you're, you're running into barriers that are causing you to feel overwhelmed, talk to your team about it. It's okay. Um, to, to talk about it with your team. It's okay to, to say, hey, I need help or I need, uh, I need assistance to be able to get through this uh, project. Um, it's better when the team helps you rather than the project failing because you didn't have enough time or you didn't have enough support. With that being said, I'm going to turn it back to our team for our open Q&A. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining this presentation with all of our wonderful presenters. Um, we will now begin to move on to the Q&A session, so you all have a chance to ask the questions that you want to our individual presenters. If you know who you want your question to be for, uh, feel free to write their name uh, in with your question. 
If not, I'll be uh, taking your questions and giving them to who I think can best answer them. Um, I do want to start off by saying that we did get a question in the audience of whether or not uh, you'll be able to have access to these slides uh, after the presentation, and the answer is yes. Um, you will be able to not only have access to the slides, but also a recording of the webinar uh, for your own personal use. So that will be made available after this presentation. If you have any more questions about that, feel free to uh, send them over to me, and I will see if I can incorporate them into the Q&A session and answer them. Um, all right, starting off. So the first question is, uh, should we make staff, mem uh, staff personal or cell numbers available to clients? Um, and I'll hand this off to Vincent to start with, uh, but maybe if somebody else who works with uh, clients also wants to speak up, potentially Tim. Thank you, Michelle. Yes, yeah, so in regards to whether uh, an employee is okay with that, I think it's, it's important to check with the employee first and um, because each employee has a, a different uh, viewpoint on whether it's okay to share some their personal cell phone to clients. Some are okay with it, some aren't. And uh, at Kingstone, we, we have the uh, 100 work styles for 100 people type of mentality. So um, if someone is okay with it, then I think it's okay to share, um, to allow them to share their cell phone numbers with clients. And if someone isn't okay with it, then um, I think there are different ways. Perhaps share um, the, the person's personal Zoom um, link, for example. Um, so I think it, you really just need to cater it to each individual. Awesome. I uh, would Tim, second that. Know, perfect. I was going to say, I know you work uh, constantly with clients, so I think you can answer that as well. I would, I would second what Vincent said, but at the same time, I would also add um, when you are talking to your employees and you are um, making those agreements, uh, the other piece to it would be, is there a way that the employee can control uh, the flow of the, of the calls? Um, I know that there's ways that you can do like an auto dialer or a, a system where they have they call a main number and then it gets funneled to to a, somebody's main number um, to to answer as they're as they're necessary. Um, so that might be something that a uh, that somebody who's maybe not uh, not comfortable with their personal number being shared that could be a workaround as well. Awesome. Um, so the next question that we have is, uh, how do you handle conflict, uh, not only within teams, but maybe between different departments when you are remote? Uh, Brittany, if you want to take this, and then uh, Larissa, maybe if you had something to add to it. Yeah, definitely. So um, we have a couple different uh, methodologies that we use internally. Uh, the first one is the KPT um, sessions, which I talked about. So we actually go through for every engagement. Um, and whenever you have like an issue with some, how something went or a suggestion for next time, we just create that as part of the process. So everyone has the ability to kind of air out their grievances regarding a specific campaign and then suggest tries for next time. Um, we also have our aspiration engine, um, which allows folks to, and we actually talk about very personal things or maybe more sensitive things. We've talked about our 401k policies, uh, issues with management, um, and creating a format where you're going through some of these issues together in a way that's productive, I think is really helpful. Um, and if anyone's interested in learning more about those specific methodologies, they can definitely reach out to us. And we've actually done those cons as consultants for some of our clients. But I think it's just important, again, going back to that structure, to create a structure around airing grievances, uh, resolving grievances, and making sure everyone feels heard and understood during that process is really important. Yeah, so I can add something in there as well. So I think it's important that you get to the source of the problem and make sure that you have a clear picture. So what are the facts and thoughts of the current reality versus the vision that you're working towards? So this is part of our problem solving method that we use internally. So that is going to help us identify that gap. So by laying that out, you're, you'll be able to identify the true source of the issue, and then you can go on and work from there. Great. Thank you. Um, 
All right, so next question is for Vincent, and it's how do you handle virtual happy hour? Is that a thing at Kintone? <laughs> yes, so virtual happy hour is a thing um, at Kintone. And initially, we we just had it like once a month, but due to the current situation, we're having it every week now. And it's sort of a larger, uh, it comes from a larger measure to um, encourage our employees uh, to have social interaction when they're at when they're working at home, and so I, I I'm the one hosting these virtual happy hours every week now. But then we're also encouraging um, people to have virtual lunches and virtual game sessions. Um, so last week we also during virtual happy hour we also played dictionary, and it's really about making employees happy um, mentally um, during this time um, and making uh, making clear to them that social interaction is a very important part of their job as well. And if I could um, just add to that, just real quick, um, something yeah. that I love that Vincent did during our virtual happy hours is we actually have like subgroups. Um, so maybe you're talking about cooking or you're talking about you know, whatever the category is. So once we go to happy hour, we can get assigned to different subgroups. So it makes it easier because sometimes during a Zoom call when you have like 20 people on, it can be a little bit difficult to communicate. So I really love that Vincent incorporated that to our happy hours. Awesome. So next question, um, I think it was originally aimed for you, Vincent, but I think Larissa might be um, good for this, which is uh, how do you offer hints um, or feedback for adapting to communication styles, depending upon uh, what people want, how they prefer to be communicated to? Yeah, so it's definitely important to consider um, what is the easiest way to communicate with that particular person. So I think it just goes along with our 100 um, work styles policy, where everybody's different, everyone has their own way of preferring how things get done. So it's important that you um, diversify how you are communicating with your team. So as I mentioned earlier, not only do we do our touch bases um, via Zoom, but also just follow up with those meeting notes posted somewhere. Um, so that kind of allows for multiple ways for the team to interact with each other, for the team to review those different resources and communicate with each other. Um, if I could I chime in as well, I, I also it. think our value of transparency um, really helps um, with um, communication by having meeting notes open and having open conversation on threads. Um, people can sort of point out oh, if someone is coming on as very strong or very aggressive. Um, so people having a, these open conversations publicly, people sort of can chime in and give advice to others' communication styles. So I think that's um, a, a, another advantage of having uh, promoting the transparency. Perfect. Um, so this question I'll, I'll open up. Um, I'm not sure who might best be able to answer it, but uh, does Kintone have any consultants as part of the team? And if so, how do you integrate them into employee teams uh, in this remote setting? Yeah, I can so speak to that. So, oh, yeah, go go ahead, Larissa. I'll let you go. Oh, I was just going to mention um, from what I work with, so not so much consultants, but we do work heavily with um, Kintone partners. So those partners provide our customers with outside solutions and any custom work. So um, we have um, regular touch bases with them so that we can connect, uh, get to know each other, make sure we're all on the same page. And then also when we do get that chance to have an in-person meeting, um, when we get to go to San Francisco to see everybody in person, we also invite some of them there as well so we can connect, have dinner, uh, have presentations, and, and different things like that. So just trying to incorporate them um, how you would um, a full-time employee. Definitely. And just uh, to add to that, so we have consultants um, that we work with in terms of, for example, like we may have a PR consultant. Um, and with Kintone, you have the ability to create guest spaces so they can use the platform and communication communicate with our team. 
uh, which easily integrates them into our technology. So I would just add that. Uh, we have, I think, time for two more questions, and then at the end, we'll sort of wrap it up and we'll try to make sure we can answer your questions after the presentation. Um, the last, uh, last of two is, how do you track work hours for exempt employees? Um, is there a process for that, and what does Kintone do to make sure that they kind of know where everyone is spending their time? Uh, maybe, Vincent, if you want to answer that? Yeah. Um, so at Kintone, we, we really don't... Um, track um, exactly when our ex exempt employees are working. Um, although we do um, promote for everyone to, on, on our Kintone portal, everyone has their own individual page. And we tell everyone to put in what hours um, of the work week they're going to be working. So on, on Mondays, you'll, I'll be working from 9 to, to 6. And on Tuesdays, I'll be working from 8 to 11, and then from 1 to, to 7 p.m., for example. So everyone um, lists their own sort of work style, um, and everyone's profile is open to um, all employees. So people will just know in general when um, and um, w what time um, an employee is working. Um, and so we don't manage it um, concretely, but we just trust that our um, exempt employees are working um, during the hours that they're, they state they're working on. Okay. Um, and last question, which I'll open up, is somebody writes, is there really a way to uh, walk away at the end of the day? I find myself going back to finish up work each night. Ah, that's a wonderful question. Um, when we're talking about walking away at the end of the day, it's it's really about shutting off the technology and um, and setting that agreement with yourself um, that would be that would be important the The other piece too is understanding that there will be some times where you need to uh, work extra time um, it's okay to do that. Just remember to to balance that with another day where you end the day early or you may might start the day later it's uh, it's really important to keep that balance or keep that uh, that equilibrium going. And if you if you don't uh, do that, you'll find that that will add up and will wear you down. Got it. All right. Well, I think that's about all the time we have. For those of you who submitted questions that we weren't able to get to, we'll make sure that we can answer those afterwards. Um, if you have any other questions that you want to send, feel free to send them to me at michelle, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, at kintone.com. That's K-I-N-T-O-N-E. Um, thank you so much to our four presenters. It was fantastic to have you on. And thank you to all our attendees who joined with us today. Uh, we hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you.